now Dr. Schweitzer became immortal? Did Baker get in yet? I told you no ten minutes ago. Well, that's your trouble. You never change your tune, Yarby. I didn't know you were musical. She just called. That flat she was having fixed is flat again. Well, the moment she gets here, send her in. What's the emergency? Salmonidae genera salvalinus. Is it fatal? It's speckled trout. This is the only known cure, hand-tied by Julia Baker. Now, I'm going fishing tomorrow, and I need six more just like it. My, that is serious. Anybody home? Just a speckled trout. You look like you came to the right place. Does it show? Only when you breathe, but keep it up. Name? Theodore Carver Newman. Department? Design. But I don't think there's time for all this. Why not? Because I'm going to pass out. Oh, no. Doctor! The last thing Mr. Newman said before I went home last night was, well, it's back to the old drawing board. I should have realized he meant to work all night. Oh, is he in the habit of doing that? Oh, yes. On Project Orion, he worked three days without sleep. Well, maybe he just stopped by the clinic to get something to keep him awake. That's the kind of thing he'd do, all right. What's his problem? Is he very dedicated or very slow? He's one of our best designers. Now, is he really perfect or just generous at Christmas time? He's perfect. Excuse us, please. I must consult with the doctor. Of course. Take a look at his personnel file. Theodore Carver Newman is perfect. Nah, he isn't perfect. He doesn't have 20-20 vision. He doesn't fish. And he doesn't have a wife. Well, it makes him smart, not perfect. That makes him perfect for Julia. Oh, belay that, Yarby. Last time I tried to play matchmaker was for my cocker spaniel, and believe me, it didn't work out. But, Doctor, this is fate. It's why Julia was late. That rhymes, but it doesn't reason. All right, look at it from your point of view. If Julia had a husband to fix her flat, you'd never have to worry about her being on time. I'm sorry I'm late, Hannah. You wouldn't believe the trouble I had getting here. She's here, doctor. I can see that, nurse. I, uh, I hope we haven't inconvenienced you by being here on time, Mrs. Baker. I'm lucky I'm here at all, Doctor. Would you believe I arrived by tow truck? Inside, or did they drag you all the way? Please, the air is out of my tire. Don't let it out of me, too, Doctor. You jump into your whites and then get over to design right away. Take a look at this man. Take a good long look. What's wrong with him? He doesn't fish. He came in this morning, took one look at me, and passed out. And he doesn't even have 20-20 vision. All right, get moving, Baker, on the double. I hope I have more luck getting to design than I had getting here. Congratulations, Doctor. Beautiful delivery. Now, don't be premature. All we've done is cast out the lure. The fish has to bite. Romeo did. Anthony did. Richard Burton did. Mr. Beaumont didn't. Who's Mr. Beaumont? My cocker spaniel. Well, Ted C. Newman will. I've got a feeling in my bones. That's your bursitis. <laughs> Why is it that nurses always wake up the patient to give him a sleeping pill? I'm not going to give you a pill. I don't need a shot either. Just sleep. <laughs> don't talk and don't yawn. Am I still beating? Just barely. Did I break a hundred? You're normal. But you left your teeth marks on my thermometer. I take it I'm going to live, then. Not for long, if you don't start getting more rest. You woke me up to tell me that? You can go back to sleep now. I'm finished. <sighs> can you imagine Richard Burton falling asleep? Ever? No, never. And then to snore yet. Yarby, I have never been sold on this project. Let's just forget Rip Van Winkle. But we can't, because he's so ideal for Julia. And you are so stubborn. 
Committed is what I am. Julia needs a husband, and Corey needs a father, and I need you. Is that a proposal? Yes. I'm proposing you get committed, too. You're the big sportsman. How do we land our fish? Well, first, just to get everybody's attention, we rock the boat. <laughs> Meatloaf must be delicious today. Mm, why? Because that's your third helping. I don't think you're going to make it. No oh, nonsense. I just eat slowly because I chew each bite 27 times. Does that really help? Well, not the food, but it's great for the jawline. Uh, what can I get you for dessert? Oh, not a thing, thanks. Well, I'm not going to eat my lemon meringue pie alone. I just couldn't really. All the calories. Oh, it's no problem. Skip dinner. Thank you. Well, hi there. Oh, hello, doctor. Hey, this is a happy coincidence. It's a small cafeteria. You know, I've been called on an emergency. Would you mind taking these over to my nurse? Right over there, huh? Not at all. Oh, thanks, thanks. Well, hello. Hi there. Your boss doctor was called away, and he asked me to deliver these. Why, thank you. My, you did that with a real flourish. Nurse lady, I put myself through Florida A&M waiting on tables. Nobody had a flourish like mine. <laughs> Mind if I join you? Not until we've been introduced. <laughs> I'm Julia Baker. Theodore Carver Newman. It's an old family name. Carver? No, Newman. <laughs> I don't believe I've um, ever seen you in the cafeteria before. I uh, generally bring my lunch. I brought it today, as a matter of fact, but I left it in the tow truck. <laughs> Must have been a big lunch if you needed a tow truck. Is it good? Well, I've had worse meatloaf. Once. It came in a sea ration. That's strange. Dr. Chegley raved about it. He um, usually refers to this place as a used food lot. <laughs> Have you been with Astro Space long? Ah, uh, since September. How have they been treating you? I've been treating them. I'm the nurse, remember? I remember. Um, do you make house calls, or will I have to come to your place? That would depend on the nature of your emergency. Oh, well, what if I were suddenly um, smitten? That's the meatloaf, tribocarbonate. It's nice meeting you, Ted. I'm due back at the clinic five minutes ago. It was my pleasure, Julia. The Hollywood Bowl tonight? Tenth Row Center. I can't use them. One of my patients took a turn for the worse. But why give them to me? Well, it's uh, sort of a peace offering for the way I barged in on you this morning. None needed. Thanks anyway. But I'm working tonight, too. That isn't what your doctor says. You are to take the weekend off, and that's an order. You're as overworked as my nurse. Does Julia, by any chance, dig uh, Joseph and his kid brother? Oh, well, they must be good. Leonard Bernstein is conducting. Clinic, Yarby. Oh, just a moment. It's for you, Julia. Thank you. Hello? Yes. Joseph who? Oh, Ted. How are you? Oh, tonight. Mmm. Well, I don't know. It's awfully short notice. Yes, I'd love to, but, uh... Ted, I'm afraid it's out of the question. No, it isn't that. <laughs> well, if you must know, my babysitter has a date tonight. I'm available. Hold on a minute, Ted. You? I'll sit with Corey. I'll teach him to play gin. Oh, I couldn't impose on you, Hannah. What's impose? I like to play gin. This is the babysitter. 
She'll be ready at uh, 7.30. Come early. Is this a queen? You know it is. Then what have I got now? Don't be a wise guy, wise guy. That's another blitz, and let's play checkers. Wow, Mama. The card shark is right. You look sensational. Why, thank you both. How come you never look like that when you take me to the park? She'd make the flowers jealous. <laughs> Hello? Ted? Oh, I see. No, I suppose that'll be all right. Yes, I, I do understand. Yeah. The main gate. Fine. Goodbye. Is he gonna be here soon? No, he has to work late, so I'm going to meet him there. Oh. Well, when you see him, tell him I love him. <laughs> sure was good being with you. Lady, you pack a great little picnic basket. <laughs> it was fun. I haven't been on a picnic in years. It was a beautiful day. But I'm afraid we wore Corey out. Oh, he's not nearly as tired as his mother. <laughs> and go recharge your batteries so we can do some serious dancing tomorrow night. And thanks for the jar of milk. I won't take a lot of time because I know you have to get the bed too. I just want to ask for one thing. Make Ted go away. And send somebody else for Mama the light. Thank you. Good night, God. Yours truly, Corey Baker. Come in, whoever it is. It's just your mother. Can Nan sleep in here tonight? The lid's on real tight. I guess it's all right, then. Is my son tired? Only kind of body tired. Did you have fun today? Sure. Catching ants is always fun. Now that you've spent some time with Ted, what do you think of him? I'm getting kind of sleepy, Mama. Okay. But I just want you to know that even if I like someone else, I still love you. Mm-hmm. I want you to be sure. Sometimes people get jealous for no reason. I'm not a jealous people, honest. Do you like Ted or not? Not. Why not? Uh, he's too tall. Corey. He's afraid of them. I want the real reason, Corey. I don't think he's right for us. Really? Really and truly. You know what he said to me? What? He said that I should call him Uncle. Uncle Ted. 
Well, what's wrong with Uncle Ted? I already have an uncle, but I don't have a daddy. Best parking space in the city. And no meter. <laughs> Do you come here often? As often as possible. What if the girl says no? There isn't always a girl. I don't date much. There doesn't seem to be enough time. You're not going to tell me I'm the first girl you ever brought up here. No, not the first. Second. <laughs> I usually come here alone. That's very selfish. Do I read that as a compliment? You should. There must be hundreds of girls out there in Los Angeles who would love to share this view. Instead of sitting at home watching their lingerie drying on the back porch. <laughs> I suppose. But I come here to dream and get lost in the view. That can happen. It's magnificent. Mm, not that one. That one. I look and I dream with my eyes wide open. Man will go to those stars someday, Julia. And I want to be a part of that. I want to help get us there in a craft I've designed. Your dream sounds very real. It's my one consuming passion. And right now, that's all I have time for. So those pretty little things will just have to find another boy. <laughs> or sit at home and watch their lingerie dry. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to that first girl you shared your dream with? Oh, she had a dream of her own. A house, wall-to-wall -wall kids, and a husband with his feet on the ground. Did she find one? Yes. It was all very friendly. The kids even call me Uncle Ted now. Good morning, Doctor. Hannah? By the way, Doctor, how was your weekend? The fish were biting, and I caught my limit plus one old shoe. How was yours? Oh, the usual. I zipped down to Acapulco for some skin diving with John Wayne, then jetted to the Mediterranean for dinner with the princess, up to San Moritz for some skiing, then back over to Washington for dinner last night at the White House. It sounds dull. Just the dinner parties. You do anything interesting, Julia? Oh, I had a very exciting weekend. I bought a recap tire. Anything else? Mm-hmm. And a new inner tube. How romantic. You can both stop fishing. Theodore Carver Newman is one of the nicest men I have ever met. There's just one tiny thing wrong with your little scheme. He is not the marrying kind. All men are the marrying kind. Not Ted. His designs are all in the future. And he doesn't need a wife. No sane man needs a wife. Is that another old Swedish proverb? Let's not give up on Ted, Julia. Love will find a way. We'll change his mind. Now leave me out of this. Me too. I told you before. I'll find my own prospect for love and marriage. All right, have it your way. But I warn you now, the next time a tall, dark, and handsome man walks through that door, I won't even call you. If he's tall and handsome, okay. But if he's dark, at least give me a shot at him. Yeah, and I just met a guy that would be perfect for your mother. Who? The new mailman. He's really the marrying kind. How do you know? I asked him. He's been married six times. 